God bless everybody. This apostle is out of Zambra for a message just alike. I want to say God bless you once again. That God is alive and well. That He loves you. I want to bless my congregations in Zoom. Praise the Lord. Those are out there listening to me. God, God, a word for each one of us. Praise the Lord. I've been continuing to talk. Until last time I was talking in five parts, I spoke about locating your enemy. I'm doing part two. I'm talking about going forth from defense to offense position. And I'm going to talk about it in the title in a few minutes, but I want to say God bless you once again that you are, whoever is listening to me out there, got a word for you. Whatever you're going through, spiritual, mentally, physical, emotional, even financially, got a word for you, man. That the warfare is not in the flesh, it's in the spirit. It's a warfare going on as I talk to you. The devil is out to destroy our lives. He is out to make us miserable. He's out to say that God doesn't exist, that God is not, that God is weak. And he wants to turn our face, our face and our backs from God. And we can allow the devil to do that to him because he's a liar. He's a father of lies. And God got the last word for our situation. We seek him. That's what it says in the word in, in Matthew. He told also his disciples, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things be added to you. Amen. So God is alive and well. I'm going to make a prayer and I'm going to get into the message. Amen. To the teaching. Amen. I want to feel your spirit, man, this morning. Praise the Lord. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for those I have Zoom, Father God, uh, Sister Janet, Sister Kathy, uh, Brother Raphael, uh, Brother uh, VJ, Lord. Brother, all the ones that are there, Lord God, the ones that are there, you touch them to come out, Father God. As you bless them, Father God, you speak to them, Father God. They come out and identify. This is not a religious walk. It's a relationship with you, Lord. It's a relationship. We got to continue to build a relationship with you, Lord, so you can speak to us through your word. The more we stand in your presence, the more we seek you, you're going to speak it through your word, Father God, because this word is spiritual. We need to die to our self-nature and stay in the spirit so you can speak to us because you are spirit. The enemy is the spirit. So that's what God said. Spirit touches spirit. That's what we got to stay in the spirit. That's why you say no flesh will glory in your presence, Lord. And I thank you for today. Give me the spirit to speak your word once again, Father. As you take your humble servant, put me behind the cross. Uh, speak to your people that are out there listen, ready to listen to your word. Tenderly, my God, take any distraction out of their hearts, out of their minds, any distraction, any noise, Father. They could be attentive to the word. As you touch them, Father God, they could hear your word and be identified and form, Father God. For your word says in Romans 10, 7, uh, 17, the faith comes by hearing, hearing the word. And I thank you, Father God. And I give you the praise and glory. Jesus Christ, son, amen. And I want to see that. If you're out there, you got a pen or a paper, you can write down the, the information you got put in your spirit. Write it down. Anything that gives you, or the, write, the, write the verses. No, mostly write the verses, right? Write the verses down. So in your devotional time, you can could, you could read the verses I'm about to say in a few minutes, amen? So I'm doing part two. Uh, go from defense to offense position, amen? Title of this teaching today in part two. God, people must size the victories the Lord has won in the cross. So you got to take advantage of the victory. God's giving you the victory. Amen. Let's go quickly to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. I repeat, go write it down. I'll open your Bibles. Matthew, if you got a Bible, Matthew chapter 11. Keep yours attended. Matthew chapter 11, Matthew. Gospel of Matthew, verse 12. Give me a minute when you find it. I can know you there. I'll repeat, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Give me a memory, find it, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You Amen. 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 Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Remember, the, the warfare is real, my brother and sister. We got to stay in the spirit. There's a real warfare going on. The devil's out to get us. He wants to go forth and conquer. He wants to stay on a on, on normal lifestyle and live a sinful lifestyle and, and do what we got to do to fulfill this lust of this, of this world. But at the same time, he's so in madness in our spirit so we can get caught up in a, in a situation of madness. And there's no, it's no escape. There's no exit. But thank God that God came and gave us the exit through Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary's cross. He has lived from the powers of darkness. Yes, we got to stay in the spirit. You got to keep away from the wrong place at the wrong time. You keep away from wrong companions. Amen. I'm ready. Everybody have it? I'm going to start. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. From the, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence is taken by force. You see that? Look what it says. In all, okay. In all, okay. I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. Look at this, Brett. For the days of John the Baptist, John was a great prophet. He was the last prophet of the Old Testament. Not Malachi. He was the last prophet when the Lord was still was fulfilling the cross of Calvary. So John was here preaching the God. Repent. That was his doctrine. Repent. And he baptized him in the waters. Then he said to the kingdom of heaven. For the time of days of John the Baptist to now, 
Now we live in the kingdom of heaven, suffer violence, and the violence taking my force. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a vicious battle going on. So I talk to you right now. And the battle is not against flesh and blood, against the powers of darkness, the devil himself, his falling angels. And they have to get you and me to put us back in bondage of all kinds. Back like being a, a drug addict, an alcoholic, a cheater, or you name it, man. A, a swingler, a, a backstabber, a gossiper, you name it, down the list. We call it to Romans. We're going to want to tell you about what God, the, God to, what they commit, those things that come in horribly. And matter of fact, I'll take you there. What says in Romans, but if God let him be for disobeying him, he gave him to reprobate their minds. We can say this quickly here, Romans chapter one. And, and verse, thank you, Lord. Since 20, because in the 20. So since the, this Romans 1 20, really quick. For for the since the creation of the world, this invisible actually have particularly been seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. They are without excuse. You see, they're without excuse. They know God. Look at it, because they, they knew God. You see, they did not glorify him as God for the word. Thank, they were thankful, became futile, and their thoughts and their foolish heart was darkened. You see, prefer to become 22, become just 22. Preferring to be white, they became fools, changing the glory of God to uncorruptible God to images, what images, making like corruptible man, birds, four foot animals, and creeping things. So, therefore, God says 24, that gave, gave them, God also gave them up to the uncleanness of the lust of their hearts, dishonor their bodies among themselves. You see, this is called uh, homosexuality, and, and that's been exchange the truth of God into a lie, worship, serve creatures rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Then you go down right here in the same book. If you read it up, look what says here in the bottom here. Look what says 28. Jump to 28. I'm going to read it. Even as they did not like to retain God in their lunch, God gave them over to the debased mind, to those things which are not fitting. You see, not fitting is disgusting. It's wicked. Being filled with all righteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covenants, malicious, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil, mad madness, they, well, whispers. Back better, haters of God, violent, proud boosters, invented evil things, disobedient to parents. On this concern, aren't you worthy, I'm boring, I'm forgetting, I'm merciful. You see that? There's a type of people, they commit these things when they're outside God's word. They will continue doing it. And if you don't fight in the battle of faith, you don't fight it for your life, you don't want to do these things because you're not staying in God's presence. This is back in the verse. For the ten, to, to the days that John the Baptist, the great man of God that he was, and to, the, and to the kingdom of heaven, suffer, to now the kingdom has suffered violence, the violence taken by force. It wasn't for the law when we all be wiped out. That was back in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14 by the law when he died on the cross. The devil thought he had the law on the cross, but he did. It says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, as much as the children have partake of flesh and blood, he himself like was shared the same. You see, he shared the same, he became like one of us, right? Shared the same. That through his death on the cross, he might destroy who had the power of death. That is the devil. So the devil thought he had him on the cross. He was saying, come down from the cross. He was praying the, the, the sacrificial price, the father of the man. And he had to pay the heavy price to give us back eternal right, give us back a right position, but set us free from the powers of darkness. He fulfilled the laws in the, the law of the sons and the prophets. He took the devil and wiped them out. He didn't, the devil knew he was destroying the cross. He was there in agony and pain, first for me and you. He didn't deserve that. He was blameless. That's what John said. Behold, the Lamb of God will take the sins of the world. Upon thousands and thousands of animals they killed in the tabernacle, that was the type of Jesus Christ on the bronze altar for the 12 tribes constantly. God was the church in the desert. And he was constantly, they confessed the sin, they took that and gave it to the priest, and they confessed and they killed the animal with the blood. What was the blood? It's the power of the blood. That's why without the blood, it says in the Hebrew, without the blood, there's no remission of sin. That's you need to apply the blood to your mind, your thoughts, your house, your apartment, your family, everybody. That's what it says in Revelation. Uh, uh, says in Revelation, uh, uh, they overcame with the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So you got to stay in the blood. You got to wash yourself with the blood. You got to apply the blood to yourself, your family, your hand, your work, your possessions, the influence. And still they influence you, you influence them. Do you see that? So in the cross of Calvary, he destroyed that devil. He wiped them out. He took them and put them in check. And so you and me got the power, the powers of darkness. Every stay in Jesus Christ, every stay in the cross, every crucify the self nature, the old nature called the flesh. Paul says in Galatians, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's a price to pay. We all got to pay a price. We got to carry a cross to carry and follow the Lord. That's what God says in the word. He that, 
He didn't forsake father and mother, brother and sister cannot be my disciple. That don't mean forsake him. He's spiritual. You got to forsake everything around you and seek him and be faithful to him. There's many people walking in the Lord, but they're more attached to people than to the Lord. They're more attached to things of the world than God. They're more attached to material things than the Lord. And God says, no. That's why God told Abraham, Abraham, take your only son Isaac to the mountain, sacrifice him, type of Jesus Christ on the cross. Why Abraham was the type of the father, Isaac, type of Jesus Christ. He took the branches on his shoulder. You see, he was going up a mountain from a real mountain. He about to plunge that knife and he stopped, no, stopped it. Now he know he feared the Lord. And another way he was telling Abraham, no ISIS in my heart, Isaac. No ISIS in your heart. You can have no ISIS in, in your heart. It got to be God number one. He had to be number one in Abraham's heart. You put anything before God, God ain't going to accept you. It cannot be, it cannot be a God of money, God, God of materialism, God of people and family. No, it got to be God first. That's what God said to his disciples. He that loves father and mother more, and brother more than me, cannot follow me, cannot love me. He got First, you got to love him. He got to be number one. You are, then your sister, then your brother, then your mother, then your father, then your spouse. But when you put people before the Lord, he ain't going to accept that. So if you got as you are, you got to take that out of your heart. Make sure God is number one in your heart. He got to be number one in the throne. That's what happened to Isaac and, and when he died. He was at the top of the Lord on the cross. That's what it says back in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son. We believe should not perish, everlasting life. And it's to Christ we got the witness. To Christ we're going to see his glory. To Christ we're going to be raptured out of soon. To Christ we're going to see his glory when we go to heaven. You cannot forsake the Lord. There's, there's many people forsaking the Lord. They think it's a religious walk. It's not religious, man. Out there's a lot, thousands and thousands of religious people going to churches by the thousands, man. They're going nowhere. They're going straight to hell. They don't repent. It's not. That's why I say those that go before me are thieves and robbers. And if you're in a wrong church, they feel you missing for me. Get out of that church. God's spirit is not there. Get out of that church. You got to be in a church to satisfy, preaching the, the word of God, the spirit filled, and teach you the way to heaven, not to hell. And my number one, I'm going to talk, I'm going to five points here. Um, on part two, go from defense to offense position. You want to write down, you can write down, God put in your spirit, you can write down. God's people must, why well, was the title of the message? God's people must size the victory the Lord has won in the, in the cross. You got to take that opportunity, take that benefit. Don't let go of God's benefits, man. It belongs to you and me, that's inheritance. The Lord died on the cross to give us back our position, give us back our right identity. As many people have lost their identity, they don't know who they are in Christ. They walk with a Bible, they say Jesus is, but they don't know who Christ is. They play in church. And God ain't going to hear nobody's playing church. Number one, it's impossible to win the fight, defense battle. It's impossible. Why? To destroy the Satan. No. Look at this. We need to offense strategies. You need offense strategy, guys, and win. The devil, look, they said the devil comes to comes to fight, come to fight us, right? And we are foolish. We put down our guards and try to defend ourselves. It's impossible. How are you gonna fight a devil? You you foolish, man. How are you gonna fight your enemy if you put down your guards? You don't put no guards for nobody. You have your guards constantly up against anything that devil come against you. Those was back in the Hosea. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You destroy because you don't know the sound of doctrine. You don't know the word of God. That's you got to be around, right, around right mentors that could teach you the sound of the word of God so you go forth in your ministry one day. Because the warfare is in the spirit. There's many people still, Christian and Christians, look at that, believe it, they're still cursing, they're still doubting, they're still talking but, 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 murmuring against God, they ain't going nowhere. And they will saying, yeah, I got you, ha, ha, ha. The battle is not in your body, it's up in the mind. The battle is in the mind. You got to battle those thoughts and put them down, put them down. Those who said back in Corinthians, for our weapons are warfare and our kind of money to put them down our stronghold. You got to put them down. Look at this. What's God's giving us weapons? What weapons are doing strategy? Number one, I always say this. I was the last time I said it again. What weapon he has given you? The weapon of prayer, the weapon of fasting. Those are powerful weapons, man. Those who he told his disciples, he said, this only come out of fasting and prayer. Sometimes it's big alive demons that you got to attack. They attack, you got to shut it down by fasting and prayer. Sometimes they're stronger, but when you put fasting, you put them down. You shut them down. Like they made it to Goliath. You put them down with the Holy Ghost. You shrunk that little pebble, knock the foot giant, cut his head off. Sometimes we got giant demons coming against us. That's why we got to fast and pray, number one. Number two, you got to meditate on the word. Many have stopped meditating on the word. That's what Paul told Timothy, study your sober proving to God, work mission, not to be ashamed, writing the word of truth. 
Are you meditating on the world? Are you meditating on people's situation? Are you meditating on, your, on, on, on things going on around you? Are you meditating on the word? Where is your thoughts at? Where are you standing at? When your mind's not feeling the word of God, your mind's being deceived. Your mind's getting full of nonsense and foolishness. The devil's throwing darts upon darts upon darts upon darts upon darts upon darts. And you don't know how to battle. Thus, you got to humble yourself and seek the Lord. You see that many things, I know my way, I could do it myself. You crazy, man? I repeat, I repeat, let me read it again. It's, impo it's impossible to win the fight and defense battle. No, to destroy the Satan. You're never going to destroy him. His works, we cannot, the Satan cannot be destroyed. He's a different element. He's going to be burning the lakes of fire. He's just, that's his future, the lakes of fire. We need to offer strategies to win. The devil comes to the to, to fight us. He goes in a, he's going to fight constantly. And we are foolish. We put down our God. You see, you can become foolish. Look at this. Right? And try to defend ourselves. You cannot defend yourself. You got to use the, the weapon of prayer and fasting. Meditate on the word. Number three, you got to worship the Lord. That's what worship beat the devil down. The word says in the song, he did, he did what's in the midst of his people when they worship. He did what's in the midst of the praise of his people. When you praise and worship, put worship to him, he's going to manifest himself. Why do you think the summer's day played the beautiful heart, the prophet of God he was, the priest and king? He played when Saul was tormented, he played the thing left him. He was back in normal again, fresh. The power of worship is so powerful, man. It heals people. People are going tormented when they hear God's music, they be delivered. Ah, they feel, they feel welcome, they feel peace. They're getting rest. Do you see that? You see that? Number two, uh, the same one, uh, uh, num uh, number, uh, number, uh, number four, number four, the blood. You got to apply the blood again. It's the blood that's going to cover you. Yes, you got to apply that when you go out in the streets out there. You got to apply that to your mind, your thoughts, your body, your car, your windows, your door, your possession, your hand, your work. You got to apply the blood constantly because the blood's going to protect you. One thing when it says in Revelation, the whole came out with the blood of them and they wear the testimony. So when you confess, it's going to happen. You got to apply that to your thought, rebuke this. You got to apply that to your food, even when you're about to eat. Whatever they'll put in the food, God's gonna, it's gonna turn into a blessing because you apply the blood. Apply the blood. That's one of the weapons that's given us. Number five, number five, uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Number five, what you give us, speak it in tongues. Are you speaking in tongues? If you spiritual, it's good to speak in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you're talking mysteries to the Lord. Isaiah like is the only prophet God that showed me in the, in the Old Testament was speaking in tongues of God. Says, this, this is the refreshment, this is the rest. So you want to go to retreat, it's good to go to retreat. But you can retreat yourself going and taking the train station when you're talking tongues. When you're in a bus, when you're driving. The more you rub and shun the rub on the road to the Lord, the more you're refreshing your soul, like going to a camp. You come and identify. You strengthen your inner man when you're talking tongues for hours. You do put up in the, in the mind of the spirit. You get in the butter when you're talking tongues. You start growing. That's your heavenly land. The devil knows French. He knows Italian. He knows Spanish. He knows African. He knows, he knows all the language, but he doesn't know the language of the Holy Spirit. He can never because he's not allowed. That's your heavenly language to your father. So it says back in the Acts in chapter 2, the fire comes upon their heads and it started speaking new tongues. So it's going to follow you talking tongues. You got to ask the Lord for that utterance. Lord, give me the tongues so I can speak in tongues to you. And God's going to do it in his time. But you got to develop yourself. But it says back in Peter, as a newborn baby, if you're young, the Lord, as you desire the milk of the world, you will grow thereby. If you're going to a certain level to another level, that says 2 Peter 3 8 2 for um. Uh, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter 3 18. To grow in grace, you got to grow, grow in grace and knowledge. And the more you grow in knowledge, the more you know who God is, what God is telling you to do for His glory. Each you got a different calling, but you got to develop those calling by listening to what God's telling you to do. I repeat, what are the weapons given us when He attack us? Use the weapon of prayer, fasting. Sometimes you got to put the prayer upside down, man. Three days, five days, ten days. You can do a partial fight, you can do, continue doing it. And the more, see, faith doesn't change up. Faith, uh, fasting doesn't change up. Fasting changes us. When you fight, you broke you for the Lord, and God's going to stop ministering to you. Those are the summer since Psalm 51. Our, our broken country of God will not despise. So you got to make sure you're in those, in those room. Number two, every prayer, you got to meditate in the word. That's what he told Joshua before into the promise that with the new generation. In chapter one, verse eight, he gave one key to Joshua. This book of the Lord should not be part of thy mouth. But you should meditate according to all that's written. I serve according to all that's written there is. For then I make the way prosper have good success by meditating. What are you meditating? Number three, 
Worship. You got to worship your own Savior. Number four, apply the blood. And number five, speak in tongues. And you're going to have the victory in those areas, my God, we're going through. What's my title? God, what's my title's message? God's people teaching. God's people must size the victories the Lord has won in the cross. You got to take advantage. You got to get bright with the Lord. Number two now. Offense warfare is bold and aggressive. You see, it's, it's, it's aggressive. Why? We are called each one of us to develop an attitude of action, an attitude of bold, a, bold, a bonus, and to go forward movement. You got to go forward, not backwards. You go forward. What? To destroy the works of the devil. God wants you to get aggressive like a lion. Get aggressive like, aggressive like, 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 a, like a warrior. And bonus, what says in, in Proverbs, the, one, the wicked flee when no one is persuaded for the righteous boar's lines. Are you a chicken or you a lion? Are you, are you, are you scared or you don't want to confront the devil? You got to confront your situations. You got to tell no more devil, enough is enough. You got to stay in the word. You got to stay in the presence of those who God could minister you. God could restore you. God could wash you with his blood. God could transform you. God could restore you constantly. The more you seek him, the more you guys going to develop you. The more God's going to transform you. How far do you want to go? You see that? You got to stay right with the Lord. I repeat, offense warfare is bold and aggressive. God wants you to be born aggressive in the spirit. Why? What's my telling this message again? And, uh, what's in Matthew, uh, Matthew 11, 3, 12? Matthew 11, 12. For the kingdom of days of John the Baptist, and to now the kingdom of heaven suffer violent, and the violence is taken by force. Instead of being violent in the flesh, get violent in the spirit against the devil. Get violent in the spirit and shut the devil down in the name of Jesus. Expose him. Rip his mask off. No one that battles against your brother, your sister, your, even your children. When they suspect you, it's not them. You got to listen to son who's talking to you. Why? Because you're a spirit. God is a spirit. There was, every, each day come, somebody comes to us. Every day, a human spirit comes to us. That's our families. God's spirit comes to you and the devil's spirit because he's a spirit. You're just concerned who's talking to you. They, they come to you. You got to be on guard. You got to stay watchful. Stand fast. Stand strong. That's what God told his disciples upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. My God. My Lord. Um, you got to move forward and destroy the works of the devil. Uh, let's go to uh, James. James chapter 1. You could write it down. You got a Bible. I'll open the Bible. James chapter 1 verse 23 to 25. I repeat, James chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. Anyone is a herd of the word and not a door. So you got to be a door. He is like a man observe his natural face in a mirror. You see that like a mirror. And the word of God is like a mirror. He observes his soul goes away and merely forgets what kind of man he was. You see, that's what happened with us. You forget the word. You cannot forget the word. It's like the word of God is like a mirror. You're watching your spiritual man. And 20, what's this? 25, 24. He observes his son goes away and immediately forget what kind of man he was. 25. He who looks into the perfect law of the liberty is liberty. See, stay the way you'll be in freedom. That's what it says 2 Corinthians 3 17. When the spirit of death is liberty, it's freedom. Continues in it. You got to continue the word, be in the do of it, live it, and not a fault, go and forgetful hear of it, but a do of the word. This man one should be blessed in all what he does. God is going to appreciate with you because you're taking heed to the word and you live in the word of God. You're a doer of the word. It's thousands and thousands of people in the church, man, they walk with the Bible, but they're not doers of the word. They're hers of the word of God. They live their own sinful lifestyle with a Bible. Going to play, they're supposed to be doing, they're supposed to be doing, instead they're going to heaven. They're going nowhere, man. If they don't repent, they're going straight to hell. That's what says the word of God. For the way of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal to Jesus Christ. Then says back in Proverbs, Solomon is the way to see right to my womb is then forth is death. So it's your choice and my choice to walk with the Lord, walk away. It's your choice. We all got a free choice. We got a free will. Satan having a free will, he sold it out. Lucifer, he sold it out, became Satan. He was kicked out. He wanted to be like God, according to Isaiah and Ezekiel. God threw him on the second heaven. He knows he's already been judged already. He's already come down. He was thrown through his own works, the devil and the cross of Calvary's cross. Those was back in, in Pistol of John. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. My God. Second Chronicles chapter 31. Let's go over there. Verse 21. Thank you, Lord. Second Chronicles. Praise you, Lord. I pray God bless you today. God, listen, you got to listen to me. Amen. God, you can say amen. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord over there. God wants to figure spirit, man. Praise the Lord. 
uh, uh, for Second Chronicles 31, verse 21. And every work uh, that he began in the service of the house of God, this is Hezekiah, look at that. Let me start in 20. Hezekiah did throughout all Judea, he did what was good, you see, in the right and the true before the Lord his God. And every work for he began in the service of the house of God, you see, he was serving the Lord. And he, in the law, he kept the word of God and the commandments and seek his God. And he did with all his heart and he prospered. He did it, he prospered. You see God with all his heart. You got to see God with all your heart. So God will give you the victory over the powers of darkness. And what he can do, you do it for his glory, not for men. You got to be a God, people, not a people's pleaser. You got to be a God's pleaser. What happened to King Saul? He became a people's pleaser. He listened to the people instead of God. So what happened? He messed up big time. He lost the kingdom. He committed suicide. Now he's in hell. David messed stop doing adultery and murder, but he repented and he seek God's to console with the Lord. He wrote Psalms 51. And he said, Lord, do not take away your spirit from me, Lord God. Where should I go? I do not take any of them. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And he humbled himself. Now he's in heaven, but he's going to play. We call humble himself. He's going to play a part in the millennium. He's going to play a prince over God's people, the Jews. But the Lord himself going to be king of kings over God's people, entire world, entire planet. He's going to be entire universe, the king of glory, Jesus Christ. But humble himself. Uh, Psalms 119, verse 60. Let's go there. Psalms 119, 119, verse 60. Write it down. I'm talking about today. Go for offense, offense position title. Gospel must size the victory the Lord has won in the cross. You got to stay in the cross. Because if you don't stay in the cross, the devil's going to wipe you out. There's no other way. Psalms 119, verse 60. I made haste and did not delay to keep your command. You see, I made haste. See, he, see, he went quickly and took advantage of that. He said, no more, Lord, playing church, Lord. And he did not delay. He cannot delay by what keeping the command. You got to keep the word of God. You got to keep the word of God. You can be playing with this. This is no joke, man. If you want to play, get out of there. What do you go back to the world? Do what you want to do. Do not play with the things of God. God is not a genie. God ain't going to allow nothing coming his way against people. When you trespass God's law, when you trespass his word, when you're trying to be a hindrance before other people, you're being a hindrance, God's going to come and take you out the way. Many people have gone, they have been judged by that. They have fallen backwards, they're going forward. It's an example of the word, says it there. Take heed to the word. Stay in the word, my brother and sister. Nobody sidetrack you. Nobody take from you. The devil is supposed to say, John 10, uh, the thief only comes to kill, to soon to destroy. But he comes to give abundant life. You got to stay in the abundance. That's Jesus Christ. He don't want nothing for you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to hurt you. He wants to molest you. He wants to rape you. He wants you in hell with him. But you don't have to take that choice no more. Thank God the second of Jesus Christ came. He came that second out and gave us back on the slave market. He delivered us from the powers of darkness. He transformed us. He put us back in the right position. We got the mind of Christ. Now we got to act him out by studying the scripture, by staying in his prison, by coming to the service called the house of prayer, the church. You can have church by staying home. There are churches in my heart. It's no such thing. The worst thing he will do not forsake the assembly. Do not forsake. And many do it. And also, so many go to other goes to other so-called churches or religious. That's not God's presence. God is not religious. God is a spirit. God said, well, God said, well, two or three guys, man, I'm in the midst of them. Why? Because they worship the Lord's spirit and truth. My God. And the devil cannot be there. When you worship, when you pray the blood, when you pray and fast to the Lord, and you got what's going to happen? You're destroying the powers of darkness against your life. Everything's being broken of your family. Everything's going to be broken because you stay in the gap for your family, for yourself. My God. Colossians chapter 3, write it down, verse 23 and 24. Colossians, New Testament. Colossians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Let's go there. We have Philip Pence. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory, Lord. Chapter 3, verse 23 and, and 24. Look what it says in the hearing. Whatever you do, do it holy to the Lord, not to man. You see? Whatever you do, do it holy to the Lord, not to man. Make sure you do it for the God's glory. When you do it for people, you're pleasing people. When you're doing, it for, when you're doing things for the people, they, they ain't getting no glory, man. That's, you're being a joke. They will say, yeah. You do it for the flesh. It ain't going nowhere. There's no blessing there. It was says 24 hope. Know that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. You see that? For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we going to receive an inheritance by serving Jesus Christ, each of you got an inheritance in the Lord. But you got to seek the Lord's presence. You got to seek his, you got to seek his will in the word of God. 
That's what it says back in Romans. Somebody can I speak to somebody out there. Somebody. Somebody's listening to me. God is speaking to them. Look what it says Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'll be sure. Go put say Romans 12, 1 to the, to the Romans saints. 12, 1, 2, 1, 2. I'll be sure to fulfill all brothers by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy is something with your reasonable service. You got to present your body like a living sacrifice. So you can be a service to the Lord. If you're playing out there fornicating, you're out there playing all kinds of homemongering, you're out there drinking, smoking, God ain't going to accept you. Because you're a, you a Christian. You got to submit. You got to get out of that place and, and look holy for the Lord. God said, touch no unclean. I'll be sure you to myself. And if you're playing with stuff, it's going to mess up your body. It's going to ruin your body because you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Look what says too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. What the key word? Renewing of the mind. You see, you got to study the word to renew it. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You want to know God's will? Stay in the word. You want to become a living sacrifice for the Lord? One time the sacrifice was in the Old Testament, in the, in the, in the tabernacle. Now you and me become the living sacrifice for the Lord. We got to present ourselves as a living sacrifice so God could accept us. God could speak to us. God could heal us and you present yourself. Living sacrifice. Are you walking with the Lord? Are you seeking the Lord's spirit too? Or are you just playing church? Or you just want the blessed, blessed, blessed um, a syndrome? There's many people in the church going for being a blessed. I want to be blessed. But at the same time, they're living to the standards of the word of God. And God ain't going to tolerate that. There got to be a separation. There got to be a seeking Lord's spirit and truth. So God could speak to you. So God could mold you to his perfect will and reach out for his glory. God wants to raise a prophet, his prophet. He wants to raise a evangel evangelist. He wants to raise a pastor, a pastor. He wants to raise a women, a man and woman, a God for his glory. Oh, my Lord. My Lord. How far do you want to go? How far do you want to see God's glory? My God. It's up to you. It's up to me. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, Matthew. Matthew. Chapter 7, Matthew, verse 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Look what says verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears the sayings of mine. What he's saying? It does, it does them. I would like him to be a wise man who built his house upon a rock. You see, you took it to God away, so you you realize it's upon a rock. Look what it says in the next verse. And the rain, tempest, trial, and tribulations. The rain descended, and the floods came. Huma, huma, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes came, and beat wind and blew against the beat against the house. It did not fall. Why fall? Why not fall? But it was found upon a rock, and the rock is Jesus Christ. Right. You find the root in Christ's word, in the Lord Jesus. Look what's in about a white foolish person. For everyone who hears the sayings of mine and does not do them, it will be like a foolish man or woman who built his house upon a sand. Type of the worldly things, type of living a fleshly life, carnal life. And God says, no, sinful lifestyle. Look what it says. And the, man, the rain descended, the flood came. The same thing happened to him. And the wind beat it, blew, blew and beat upon the house. That's you and me, type of us, the us, the house. And it fall, white fall, but great was the fall of it. You see that? You see that? That's what's going to happen to those that don't seek the Lord's spirit. You either upon a rock or upon the sand. It's your choice. It's my choice. Who are you walking with? Who are you seeking? Who are you talking to? Are you walking with Jesus, man? The Lord, the Savior of the world, man? God is not religious, man. People walk, people up there go to all kinds of perverted places and wear a big cross. They're all gambling. They go into the, to the hot spots, man, all the perversion. They go into the, all, all these places getting high and drunk and they want a big cross. There's no power on that cross. The one was in the cross who came off the cross. His name is Jesus Christ. According to the scriptures, Paul, according to, he was he died according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, he was buried according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures, he was directed the third day according to the scriptures. And he's coming back according to the scriptures. Get us out of here. That's the true Christ right there. That's the true transformation. Do you believe? That's what I say. With a hard belief, with a mark of faith, you should be saved. What's my title? God's people must size the victory the Lord has. One in the cross. So we're talking about here offense, warfare, number two, bold and aggressive. We are called each one of us to develop an attitude of action, attitude of bonus, or to go forward movement instead of backwards and destroy the ways of the devil. Number three now. Number three, number three. Traditionally, we have been taught in Bible schools and seminary. Look at this is supposed to be Bible school. The God's people have how to protect themselves against the devil. Now is people tell you how to protect. I can't protect. I'm not protecting my soul against the devil. You know, says thing. You cannot play. He'll eat you up. The word says in the epistle of John, the last chapter, verse. The words under the wicked one, but we are God. 
the whole world's under the wicked one, but we belong to God. He got everything in his pocket, but not the God's child, not God's servant, not, God, not God's believers. We'll be walking with the Lord. That's in the same verse. The devil, not the now it's time for us to raise up as God's army and invade Satan's territory and take back what he has stolen from us. You see, he has stolen from us. You see that? So we got, uh, why he has stolen from us? Who can tell me what he's stolen from us, man? Number one, our health. He has stolen our health. Number two, our joy. My God, he has stolen our peace. Look at that. He has stolen our rest and our well-being. You got to take back what he's talking for. You got to take back territory by getting aggressive and back go forward like an army of God, like a soldier, and battle the devil in the spirit, not in the flesh. You use the weapon of warfare. You use the word. You use the prayer. You get into fasting. You use worship. You use the blood of Jesus. You use the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the devil got to back off, my Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Ephesians, praise the Lord, chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, I mean, his word, his strength. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God, God has given us our armor. You got to wear the armor for the God's glory. Read the, read the whole chapter, it's going to show you how to wear it. You got to wear the armor so the devil attacks you, he backs all you, because you battle him in the spirit. If you don't wear the armor get, get, and you don't be strong in the Lord, the enemy's going to wipe you out. Who make out of you a homosexual, a lesbian, a, a drug addict, a, 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 a santero, a witch, a warlock, you name it. A pedophile, a rapist, you'll do it. You'd be surprised. Many out there have, got caught out there doing all this stuff, man. They weren't time Christian, they were believers, but they walked away from the Lord and said, yeah, I'm going to eat you up alive. And he did. He took those people, man, supposed to be brothers and sisters, but no more. They left the Lord, now the devil has devoured them. Not some are doing big time in jail. Some are, some are, some are in hell is so right now. I talk to you. They're in hell. But not, so not so many to God's ways, man. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Second Thessalonians now. Let's go there. Write it down. Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Look what it says. But the Lord is faithful. He's faithful, right? Who will establish you. He's going to establish you. He's going to establish you, guys, and guard you from the evil one. Look at, look at that beautiful promise. The Lord himself is faithful and will establish us and guard you from the evil one. He's going to establish you and guard your life. So the devil cannot touch you because you're walking with your master. You're walking with the king. You're walking with the king. And the devil's mad. It's a song. It's a song called that, right? You're walking with the king. The devil's mad. It's too bad, devil. You cannot come against me because the king of glory is walking with me hand to hand. Now, not forsake him. I'm in big danger. If I walk away, I'm going to get eaten alive by you. That's what it says back in Peter. Be sober, be alert, because your adversary, the devil, seeking who could devour. And he don't play. The devil don't play, man. The devil don't respect nobody under the sun. Who take a little old, old, old lady man and get raped and get this and, and kill her, stab him, and kill the hurt her. Don't take a little baby man, molest. Oh my God. Look at all this human traffic going out there, man. People being sell for money, man. So sad. Little girls, boys, man. That's the filthy devil, man. 24 hours, man. He's doing it 24 hours, man, constantly. Selling souls according to Revelation. God is going to stop that. Judgment is coming, man. The judgment is coming sooner or later. There's too much corruption going on. There's too much hypocrisy. There's too much lies. And God hates that. Since inside the church, the church got to get right with the law. They're testing the ministers of God. But they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. God's going to, God's going to visit you. God's going to, God, God's going to show you enough is enough. That's what it says in Peter. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord from the pulpit unto the world. It's going to have start in the church, the judgment of God. It's going to start. It says in Peter. My Lord. Um, amen. Amen. Let's go now to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look what it says in verse 4 in the hearing, 4 and 5. For our weapons are warfare, not carnal. See, not carnal, no. But our mighty through God pulling out the strong. With the strong one? The battlefield, the mind. You got to pull it down. Look what says five. Casting down what? Every argument, every high thing that exalts so against the knowledge of God. Bring what? Every thought. You see the mind, the thought, into the captivity of obedience of Christ. You got to bring it to captivity by saying, no. You pull, you pull it down. The high imagination. When you got a high mind, you do whatever you want. That's dangerous. You got to be that prosperity. 
You gotta say, no, I must stay humble. Because that's gonna mess my life, it's gonna mess up my walk. People wanna, people wanna think I'm a joker. That's what it says back in Prophet Solomon, as a man think it's easy. What are you thinking? As a man, woman think it's easy. Are you thinking negative? Are you thinking positive? Are you thinking you're gonna make it? You're gonna make it? Are you thinking guys with you and not with you? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Make sure your thoughts in God's, God's presence. Make sure you're thinking God's word. Make sure you're thinking what God said you to do and think on his word. The Paul says meditate these things, meditate these things. Matter of fact, let me go to Philip Pence. Man, Lord, show me Philip Pence what, 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 how to think. I believe it's in verse. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Man. Look what says in Philip Pence, chapter 4, verse 8. He wants Amen. you to think these things. He wants you to think these things. Look what it says, well, Freddy, my brethren, whatever things are true, you see, whatever things you see are true, what things are noble, what things are just, what things are pure, what things are lovely, what things are good report. If there any very, what you mean, power in the Greek. If there anything, anything praiseworthy, what it says, meditate on these things. People meditate on these things. Meditate on them, man. And you're going to have the victory. But it all starts by renewing our thoughts and don't worry about staying in God's presence. Oh, my Lord. Got to use those weapons of warfare. My God. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 89. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 89. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 89. Look what says 89. Be sober, be vigilant. You got to be watchful because your adversary, the devil, Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking he could devour. He wants to devour you. So you got to rebuke him. You got to stay in the spirit. Number, look what I said, number nine. Verse nine, resist him. This was back in James. So may you show to God, resist the devil, and he's going to flee for you. At first, it's submission to God's ways. Then he resist and say, no, devil, he got to go. Look what it says, resist and steady fast in your faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experiences and your brother in the world. Every time going through, somebody says, you're my brother and sister in Europe and Africa, they're going through the same thing right now. The same trial, same old thing, same old tricks by the devil, that filthy stretch that he is. That filthy devil, that filthy snake in his, man, the old serpent, the devil. That's what you got to stay in the spirit. Colossians chapter one, let's go to Colossians chapter one, verse 13 and 14. Let's go there. Colossians, write it down. Colossians chapter one, verse 13 and 14. The way he says in 13, he has delivered us from the powers of darkness and covered to the kingdom of his, the son of his love. You've been translating, in other words, 14, whom you have re through what? His blood and the forgiveness of sin. He has washed you in his blood. He has washed you in his blood. You've been trying from darkness to light. Now you walk in earth, it's two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. Which kingdom are you walking in? Are you walking with the devil? Are you walking with the Lord? Are you walking in the flesh? Are you walking in the spirit? He has translated you from darkness to light. Now you're a child of the spirit, not of the flesh. And you've been washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. You've been forgiven. You've been transformed. God will give you a new nature. Paul says in the Corinthians, if any man won't be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away because things become brand new. So I mean, now you got to start feeling that new nature inside of your inner man, that real person been born again. Once you came out of your mother's womb, you came out and you were born a second time in the spirit. That's what told Nico, they must be born again. For flesh and blood can I hear in the kingdom of God, my Lord. Amen. Now you got to come to Bible services. You got to come to Bible, to the services. You got to come to Bible study time. You got to come to uh, to all night visual. You got to you got to get come in prayer. Oh my Lord, and come in worship, battle the devil. But many are doing it. Many go to churches. They do a social club. Everybody's hanging out. But the pastors up there, the ministers of God, people who only feel praying the pulpit in the in the altar. Instead of coming to the altar, they go in some words inside the church. You think that's right, man? God is watching everybody. He knows who is who. And he knows who are faithful. I said that God says in Timothy, God knows who are his. He knows who are his. And if you're not God, make sure you're walking with the Lord, man, because he's coming back for us, man. And that trumpet is going to sound. I'm just saying, and that's the hope of the church getting out of here sooner or later. The herb is about to be given to the Antichrist sooner or later, seven years and a half, called the One World Order. We head into the new world or order. All these Numenati people, all these all these crazy, insane, the biblical abominable, abominable people saying this, man. They are gonna be given to the Antichrist. He's gonna take over the whole earth for one with, with, with his seal number six six six. 
And you get left behind, you, you, you get as a child of God for disobeying the Lord, you're going to have to get your chop door to be with the Lord. And that ain't going to be easy. All that's to already prepare. But that's just in the word, not willing, not to pressure, all come to repentance. It happened that there's a no. God, make me a no, type of the cross. Make me an ark, no. And no one created a beautiful ark. All got saved. One of the animals got saved with eight people. The rest, the whole human being got perished. But it's obeying the Lord because they were foolish. Open to us, no. Open. God, it was too late. It's going to be a sin the son of, when the Son of Man comes. Like that, there's not going to be the same thing when God comes. That's what it says back in the gospel. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? When the Son of Man comes back, will he find faith on earth? So this is a walk of faith. Do not lose your faith. This is back Paul to Timothy, to, to, to in Timothy, in the book of Timothy. And the letter man should depart from faith. Look at that. Giving his solution spirits, doctrines of demons. They forsook the true word of God, the son of darkness, which follow false doctrines. They're out there about the millions out there. You'd be surprised, man. They're walking with Bible. There's something else. They ain't going nowhere. It's hellish. Hallelujah. Number four. God is raising up an army to invade the Satan's territory. The brick that has already been won in the cross, Calvary. Our, our general, our generals, our Lord Jesus Christ has already conquered the devil and his kingdom. He has destroyed the powers of darkness. You must sit back in, Col in Colossians 2, verse 15. Colossians right here, 2, 15. Having this arm, this principality and power, he made a public spectacle of them trumping over them. He destroyed the devil and he spoiled his principality and powers. This is back in Hebrews 2 14. First, he destroyed the devil and his principality and powers. I repeat back to 14 and 14 of, of Hebrews. His mother, his children have been partake of flesh and blood. He and so she took like us the same nature. Likewise, he shared the same. See, that through his death on the cross, his death, he might destroy him who had the power of the death. That is the devil. He destroyed the devil the cross of Calvary, and he spoiled this on the principality and powers for me and you. So when they're trying to get you, it melts off. It melts off like butter. It can't get you. It cannot grip. It cannot grip to you. It got to melt off because you're being delivered. But you break the spiritual law, you go back playing with sin. They're going to attach to you. You in danger. What to you, man? If you're if you're not full of the Holy Spirit, you can say seven other spirit evil. They're going to come in your spirit. They're going to devour you. They're going to possess you. Some of the spirit is going to take over your spirit. Sometimes it could be allegiance, man. It could be thousands of them. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Uh, John chapter 14. Let's go there. John 14, verse 30. Chapter 14, verse 30. Let's go there. I'm, I'm talking about part two. God for go from the defense to offense position. Title of the message. God's people must size the victory the Lord has won in the cross. My Lord. John chapter 14. Verse 30, I will look, I will no longer call you, talk to you much, but you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. You see, the ruler of this world is the devil. He controls the system. He got nothing in the law. He got nothing in you and me because we both, we're walking with the law. We've been delivered from his path, for his wickedness. We walk, we, we've been for his power. Then walking in Jesus Christ. He's walking side to side with you and me. How can the devil touch me? How can the devil come again? He's impossible. The Lord is protecting me. The Lord is molding and shaping me. He's being with me. That's what it says in the psalm. The angel of the Lord cancels the wrong doors to fear the Lord. And you feel God's going to protect you. God, the devil cannot touch you. All he can do is throw things at you. He throw things at you. Point, point, point. So what? He throw rocks. In other words, he could throw it, but it's going to bounce off. Whatever, devil. You see that? Then when you walk in the Lord's spirit and truth, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Let's go there. Chapter 10, verse 38. Look what's in this beautiful verse about the Lord and Lord Savior Jesus Christ. How God anointed Jesus a Nazareth with Holy Spirit and with power who went up by doing good, healing all, all who are oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Anywhere the Lord went, he delivered people. He healed people. He loved people, man. He went to the same with each one of us. We got to love the souls. We got to deliver the souls and God's going to do it in the name of Jesus. If you're a believer, you're a child of God, God's going to use you. But you pray in church and religion, he can't use you. There's no connection there. You're not walking in the rules of the Lord. You're not walking connected to the Holy Spirit. You got to make sure you're walking with the Lord. You got to show you're walking in, in, in sanctification. You got to show you got to walk with in, in love. You got to walk in the, in the fruits of the Spirit. Now, you're walking in the flesh. The devil said, yeah, whatever, man. Go here. He, he controls that flesh. 
We got to we got to battle them in the spirit. It's in the spirit we're going to win. The battle is fought and won in the spirit. You got to fight in the spirit on the second realm. When we fight and win there, God thing is going to manifest in our realm. What are you fighting? Are you fighting for your, you know, your daughter, your son? Are you fighting for your family? Are you fighting for your health? Are you fighting for your prosperity? Are you fighting for everything God has promised you? Or are you not fighting? You got to fight for it. You got to battle it. That's what's back again. And um, Matthew 12, I'm going to go back again. What says in Matthew 11, uh, chapter 11? Thank you, Lord. And verse, thank you, Lord. And verse 12. For the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and the violence taken by force. You got to get violent in the spirit, not in the flesh, to battle the devil. The same wrath you had one time, the same aggressive anger you had, the same wrath you had one time in the flesh, transferred to the spirit against the devil. And what's just going to happen? You're going to rip them apart because you, you, you make business with them. You, make, you see, you make business. You're not playing around. And when you're not playing around, brother, the devil knows you're playing around. He's going to be scared of you. He's going to back off. My Lord. My God. Uh, Galatians chapter 1. Let's go there. Thank you, Lord. Galatians chapter 1. You got to be aggressive. You got to be born the Lord. Many go to church and clap their hands, look at each other's faces, do a lot of activities. But where is the battle? Where is the fighting one in the spirit? Are you, are you seeing God's results? Are you seeing deliverance? Are you seeing all that? Nope. You know, because nobody's paying a price. Everything's surface. God is not surface. God is deeper things. God is more beyond that. You got to get deeper the things of the Lord. You got to be like Ezekiel. God told get in the river, Ezekiel. Start swimming, Ezekiel. Why? Because he, he came from ankle deep to knee deep, from knee deep to hip deep. When he came all the way up here, then Ezekiel, the prophet, had to swim inside the river of God and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. God wants you to get you in the spirit. He wants you to swim in the, in the, in the things of the spirit. He don't want you full, he wants you full to the ring and it gets submerged in the spirit. And when you submerge without living, watch out, devil, man. You become ambitious. You become an invisible force. Everything you do is going to happen. Everything you do, you destroy the powers of darkness. No, you're invisible. Nobody can stop you. No powers of darkness. You become a threat to that devil. You become like a Samson Manonchi. Everywhere you go, you destroy the devil, rip the devils apart, you rip the lions, everything apart. And you, they're scared of you. They're going to look for the secret. The secrets, no, 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 secret. They can't find it. But what happened when you give him the secret like foolish Samson that they're violent, took out his eyes, I'm not spiritually. You got to keep your soul like the Lord. You got to keep your soul for all. Well, he's the true Nazarite. Samson sold out. He was a Nazarite, separate from the Lord, but he sold that out for a nice, nice pleasure. But the Lord, he gave in. He kept him so called. He's Jesus and not. It was back in at, at chapter 10, verse 38. How the, Lord, how the Lord anointed Jesus Christ, what? A Nazareth. He was another Nazarite who went about what? Doing good. Healing all the while, press of the devil, God was with him. The Lord was with Samson, but the Lord departed from Samson for, for, for the surveying the Lord. You see? <coughs> he didn't keep heed to the word. He took heed to his calling. My Lord. Galatians chapter 1, verse 9. The question says, For we have said this before, no, now I'm saying it again, if anyone preach any other gospel, you see, to you, let that we have, as we see, let him be accursed. If somebody comes to you with another gospel, let him be a curse. Be careful what you're hearing out there. Everything coming in YouTube and I play it, through the radio is not the gospel. It's the demonic gospel. And those gospel put you back in bondage, put you back to disobeying the Lord, doing your own little thing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a lie of hell. Who are you listening to? What gospel? The word says faith comes by hearing the word. We walk by faith, not by sight. You got to study the talk doctrines of the Lord to know who you are as a child of God. Then Paul tells Timothy, start your soul proven to God, a work machine not to be ashamed, writing the word of truth. Are you studying the word? Are you meditating on the word? Are you praising the Lord? Are you thinking what he told you to think? That's what it says back in Isaiah. He should keep him in perfect peace who stores out towards you. You see, who God's going to keep your mind because you're thinking on the Lord. Truth from the Lord forever, the Lord Jehovah's everlasting strength. Oh, my God. Make sure you're walking with the Lord, the King of glory. Make sure you're obedient to his void by staying in the word, not being religious. God don't want a religious person. Religion put the Lord on that cross. They crucified him. Brother, it's not through the Pope. It's not through no Mary. It's not through Buddha. It's not through Hani Krishna. It's not through all this uh, uh, Muhammad. It's not through his false teachers and the course, through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who go through are thieves and robbers. 
my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they should not follow. Who are you listening to? Who is talking to you? Are you into the voice of the shepherd Jesus Christ, or are you into the voice of the false shepherd, the devil himself? That's what I said back Paul to the Corinthians. Marble not saying trust like an angel or like he got his false ministers. You see, they're false, they're phonies. They want to get you, they want to be with you, they want to entrap you, they want to enchant you, they want to put you in a situation you cannot get out. You got to be in a church that's delivered by the power. The church is full of the Holy Spirit where God is manifesting himself. Not a place that's all religion and talk, talk, talk. Let's do this, let's do that. God is not a, God is not a, God, God is active in the spirit, not in the flesh. That's what's back in the world. When the spirit of there is liberty. Where God's spirit is at is freedom. My God. You see, so we got to stay in the word. Stay in the presence of the Lord. Stay with God, what he wants to do for his glory. So I'm talking in part two, go from for offense, go from defense to offense position. Got to defend yourself. You got to put on your guards. Got to fight the good fight of faith. Paul says, Paul says to me, fight the good fight of faith. Hold down to eternal life. Title of teaching, go. God's be on my side. The brick the Lord has won in the cross. Number five now, number five. Now it's up to us as God's army to, to boldly size and take the territory. And size and take the territory that the law, our Lord has conquered for us. I repeat, now it's up to us to as God's army to boldly size and take territory. And size and take territory one upon another. He has taken out of you, your territory, our joy, our peace, family. You don't know what you're going through. That territory has been taken from you, from the devil has stolen from you. Well, he's a thief. It's time to take it back in the name of Jesus. It's time to take it back in the name of Jesus. It's time to take it back in the name of Jesus. Take territory and size and take the territory one upon another. But look at all. For the Lord, our Lord has conquered. He has conquered for us. The Lord has conquered those territories in the cross of Calvary. He's the second Adam. He gives back out dominion over this earth, over the ones who call eternal life. He has given you blessing. He has seen you with the Holy Spirit. You go, you, you are worth so much, man. People that are worth a trillion dollars. I don't care if you're worth more than those people from, from the house of the family of England. Those the royal people. They're nothing compared to a child of God. Because they're, they're going to go straight to hell when the queen herself, she don't repent. Those are born again, man. Our old granny in the house, she's a woman of God. She referred to the Lord. She left so, so many years in the Lord. But now she's so tired. No, but guys, when she wake up, she's going to wake up and grow with her crown. She's going to have a crown of glory. You see, people got to wake up, man. This is a temporary life. It's going to perish sooner or later. God said, heaven should pass away, but my word should not pass away. In a moment, a twinkling eye, we're going to be raptured. That's going to happen sooner or later, man. That's you got to make sure you're right with the Lord. Make sure you, it's good to ensure so your house, your family, everything. Make sure you're ensuring the God himself. Make sure you're ensuring the cross of Calvary name is Jesus Christ. Because you're not ensure you're going to get left behind. And when that trumpet sound, baby, we're going to go out of here. When you came out the world, you were sanctified. Second stage, you were justified. Third stage is coming sooner or later, being glorified. We're going to have glorified bodies. That's coming. And they call the rapture of the church. They're taking away. But God don't want to be too proud to all come to repent. God, God don't think like man. He wants everybody to come to repentance. From the White House down to the person living in the ghetto. He wants all of us, man. He wants everybody. He wants the Illuminati. He wants the, he wants the Muslims. He wants all cult people. He wants to know that he loves them, that he died for them. But he gives people time. You see, God gives time. But it's limits. There's limits. God waited so much in the days in order to repent. He told no one can blame the ark. The five food fulfills. Huge ark. Repent is going to be a big flood. I didn't believe him. And it finally happened. It came to pass. They all were destroyed by the big flood, man. This time he's going to destroy the earth by fire. We call it to Peter. Verses. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 25. The the great governor of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, came out of captivity, but the was in Jerusalem, Nehemiah. Uh, chapter 9, verse 25. Because it's verse 25. And they took the strong city and rich land. Look at that. God gave it to them. And possessed the house full of all goods. They took back the territory. Nehemiah with his people. The stern ready dug vineyards, olive grew, and fruit trees in abundance. You see that? So they were all, so they are uh, were filled, grew and grew fat. The blessing was upon them. Look at that. And delight themselves in the great goodness. That's what happened when you stay faithful to the Lord. You fight. When you fight the powers of darkness, you're going to get back that territory he has stolen for you. Satan has stolen for you for many years when he was in the world, where the Pamagons, where the Pamagons, where the, where the, where the, where the stolen from us. 
Yeah, I stole him for all these things, man. I stole him for a godly story back to each one of us. All these things I stole him from, from those demonic powers, I stole him for God's going to take away and give it back to you. And we stay faithful to the Lord. God bless his people back. Everything was taken from him, he gave it back to him a double portion. Because they didn't believe in the God, Jehovah, Jehovah, their provider. God gave him back. Because they knew that God was going to give him back everything they lost. My God. They got, they, got, they got back their territories, in other words, my God. Glory, glory. Um, thank you, Lord. Psalm, um, Psalms 105, let's go there. Psalms 105, verse 44. Wow. Psalms 105, verse 44. What it says? He gave them the lands of the Gentiles, and they inherit the labor of the nation. Now you mean that God gave them the God says that he gave him the land of the Gentile. He gave him their land. According to Deuteronomy, when God said, I will give you blessing in the city of blessed the country. When they came out of captivity, God gave cities to these people. God, God's people, the Hebrews. He gave them the city, good things inside those houses. He took away from the, from the giant people. He took away the giants out the way and gave them their lands. He says he gave him the lands of the Gentiles. But they said, not only that, he inherited the, the labor of the nation. He took away their jobs and gave the jobs to God's people. Whatever they were producing, whatever was being uh, making production, everything, he gave it to God's people and blessed us, took it out from the, from the wicked and gave it to his people. That's what says that beautiful verse in, in, uh, in Proverbs. The wealth of the, of the wicked stir up for the righteous. The wealth of the wicked stir up for the righteous. Think about that. Wow. So it stir up for me and you. God was giving a right moment, a right time to, to transfer wealth to God's people. But I'm questioning you are you ready for that wealth? Are you walking with the law? So this is back in Christianity. Money is a defense, but wisdom of God is a defense. You can have the wisdom, according to James, the wisdom of the world. It's selfish, greedy, and envy. You got to have wisdom from above, where it's pure and lovely, where it's righteous. God will bless you with that wisdom. That's why it says wisdom of God is a defense and money is a defense. You said properly. Other people said that money is a root to evil. It's not. You cannot have money control. You got to control money. God wants you to become rich towards them by being a blessing to somebody else. You know what's being rich spiritually, man? Abraham was wealthy spiritually. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the three of them. The prophets that were rich and got answered them quickly because there was his people. Come on, you go to that statue of Jesus Christ to become a giant of faith and become wealthy towards the Lord. There's many wealthy people out there, but they live in mercy in those, those big palaces out there, all those Hollywood and Malibu, whatever, out there, those high places, man. They're going nowhere, man. They're all miserable. They, always, they have to try everything under the sun. They're all living all crazy. And now they're thinking of thought committing suicide. You see, that's not what that's not rich towards God. You got to be wish, wish towards God by being a blessing to somebody else. God says, more blessed to give and to receive. You become a strategist. The more you get, the more God gives you. The more you let go, the more he's saying open to you. He wants the best if you got to be a blessing to somebody else. My Lord. Philip Pence said, chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. I must conclude this teaching today. Praise the Lord. Continue in part 3 tomorrow. Uh, uh, Philip Pence is chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Look what it says. Other hear me. Now, now I have already obtained, or oh, I am already perfect, but I press on that I might lay hold that which in Christ Jesus also had laid for me. So he's pressing forward, Paul, not letting go of Jesus Christ. He's holding forward, going forward to press to Jesus Christ. He like hold, but he said, I'm holding on to Jesus Christ. Lewis, brethren, I do not count myself to this 13 have apprehend one thing, but I do forget those things which are behind and press what for to those things which are. Ahead, what's number 14? I press towards the goal. What goal is that? The price. I will all call of God in Christ Jesus. He's going for whatever happened, he let it go. Whatever's behind, he's going to let go to press to Jesus Christ. He said, I'm running like a race, a Greek race. I'm running like a Greek in the race, in the, in the barefooted Greek race, and I'm going to my goal. He, the, the, the Greek are going to that, that leaf crown, but he's going for the eternal crown. He was going to that, he was going towards Jesus, not letting go of Jesus Christ. He was going forward. Forget about it. You got to forget about the past. If you don't enter your, if you, you don't enter your future, you don't go to the past. You got to go to the past of unforgiveness, of, of, of resentment, and be jelly. You got to go all that stuff to enter your future. Forget what happened with this you. Let go and pray for your enemies and go forward, man, to Jesus Christ. And he's waiting for you the next time. The other says in Hebrews 12, too, looking unto Jesus. Your autumn finisher, your faith. The way he stays going to perform till he comes back. Read it when you have a chance. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter, let me go there. My Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Look what it says. Look at this. 
looking unto Jesus, your author, he's your author and, and, and finisher, your faith, our faith. You see that? Do this. For the joy that was set before him and do the cross, you had to pray for me and you. Despising the shame, sat down where? We could put it. Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's awesome. Come on, you same thing. Listen back in Revelation. He didn't, he didn't do strange. He that endures, you see with me, also in my throne, I said, my father's throne. What a promise. If you endure to the end, he didn't do to the end. You're going to be, over, he's going to put you over there as a leader, over nations, over nations. If you endure to the end. You see that? We got to endure. We got to endure. Oh, my God. Micah chapter 1, verse 5. Micah, minor prophet. Thank you, Lord. Look what says in Micah. Holy Ghost. Chapter 1, verse 5. This is the transgression of Jacob for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob, of Samaria? What are the high places of Judah there in Jerusalem? So you see, God was doing some of the transgressions. We got to let go of those transgressions. We got to go things that are holding us back. You cannot be playing with two hands. You cannot be holding on to sin and God. I ain't going to say no. One is pulling you. Who's pulling you? God or the flesh? Who's more weaker, the flesh or the Lord? You got to make sure you walk with the Lord, spirit and choose so God can walk with you and take advantage and take all over you and mold you and show you to his purpose and plans for his glory. Now the flesh is going to take over the devil, make you something horrible. Then you inside the church being used by the devil. That's what Paul says. Watch out for those who cause division among you. Watch out for Alexander, Alexander the Copper with him in much evil. Who was Alexander the Copper Smith? This man walked with, the, with Paul. And he was, uh, he was the devil himself. After Paul walked through, he called him to Timothy. He taught uh, Nebo Emperor by Paul, the people that he was a phony Paul. The same man taught the Nebo Emperor to, to, to Paul get slaughtered and chop his head off. That's why he told Timothy, I have fought a good fight. I'm ready to be dismissed from this world. If you look at the, oh my God, Paul was also, he was a mighty man of God. This man walked next to the man of God, man. And he was suddenly on his back. God should be saying that he's a phony. That's Alex. The Paul said, watch him also. Watch out for him. Alexander, Alexander Smith, the couple's been coming as a woman, as a man to your life. Hey, how you doing? God bless you. But the father watching you. And they're talking behind your back. <laughs> making up lies, making up false, mis false reports about you. A gossip. And people weak. So, yeah, I knew it, yeah. And when they come around, you think you're you this person. You're not. That's what happened to Paul, my God, man. He got a set chunk with this, this, this phony, this devil. The type of the, he, he gave him to the devil. He gave him into the devil, man. But that was the devil himself. There's many people out there be used by the devil in the church, but God's about to raise up an army of people to convey the devil's territory and put him in check, recording what he did for us in the cross of Calvary's cross, that great conqueror, Jesus Christ, son of the living God. You've been chosen, my brother and sister. You got a calling. What are you doing with that calling? Are you spending time with the Lord? Are you seeking the Lord? Are you praying to the Lord? Are you studying his scriptures? Are you going to the right place in the church to worship the Lord? Are you hungry for the lost? Which says in Patrick Jesus, chapter 5 and Matthew chapter 5 when he was in the mountain. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst after righteousness, they should be filled. Blessed are the pure in the heart, for they should see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, they should be true, called children of God. We gotta be peace, we gotta be at peace with each other, my brother. Be at peace with one another. But peace comes from the Lord. There's no peace out there, out there's destruction out there. That's what guys call the Prince of Peace. He gave us peace in the cross academy. He gave us, and he nourishes us back. He gives back a right identity, a right position to go forth for him to represent in the midst of madness out there. There's no hope out there, man. They need to know Christ died for them in the cross of Calvary, that he's coming back. Amos chapter 9, Amos, verse 12. Prophet Amos, minor prophet. Look what says Amos. I'm about to come in a few minutes. Prophet Amos, chapter 9, verse 12. And this man was no educated prophet. He was, he was a he was a farmer, man, educated man, greenhorn underdog, a greenhorn underdog. He was educated, but God took this man's life, took his mind, and put him with his wisdom, understanding, and made a mighty prophet of God, Amos. When this man spoke, he wrote like a lion, man. He was vicious. I'm get about it. He couldn't. The word said that he was too. The earth, the, the light couldn't stand his words. He was so heavy. Look what it says in in, in, in in twelve. They man possessed the remedy of Edom. And all the gentles who are called by my name. See that? Look at that. And says the Lord who does these things. So God's going to allow us to possess the remedy of Edom and all the gentles who are called. You see, and you are called as a gentle. You're going to possess your own personal land. You're going to possess what the devil stolen from you. 
Whatever was cursed around you, whatever was out of water, he's going to make it beautiful, flourish with beautiful flowers, with beautiful ponds. My God. And by the time you're going to be so blessed, you're going to look at you, oh my God, you're so blessed, you're so joyful. They're going to see the reaction you come out of you, the light of God coming to you. They're going to see Jesus Christ come out of you. That's the way God says we are opening epistles. People, when you go out there, read you. You know, they read you. They look at you, they read you like a letter. God is through you, God, God is speaking to them. Make sure your word said, uh, Jesus Christ, Lord, in me. Make sure you be a presence of the Lord, not of the devil. As many disgusting people start to say inside the church, the person be believers. And when people read them out there, say, Oh, I want to be like that, man. For a while, I stay out here. Those are, those are a bunch of liars. They want you to call them Christian and go nowhere. They need to repent what they're doing. If they don't repent, they're going to wind up in hell. Amen. Conclusion Romans chapter 8. Let's go there. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 8 of Romans, verse 37 to 39. What's my title of this message? God's people must size the victory the Lord has won in the cross. Part two, go from defense to offense position. Look what it says in chapter 8, 37 to, 30, to 39. Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that love us. We're more than a conqueror. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing. No high, no depth, any other creature. I don't care what planet they come from. I don't care what you're for, what creature, or eating, whatever. Look at that. Nothing which should be able to separate us from the love of God, which Christ is our Lord. Nothing's going from God because you belong to his family. You've been chosen. You was one time an outcast, a foreigner, but you're a citizen of heaven. You got to see on your forehead the Holy Ghost. Your name's written in the book of life. Now you're walking with the King of Glory. He's walking with you. And to get you out of here, but you gotta each you got an assignment to fulfill for the Lord. And that's something you gotta come to pass if you stay in the order of the Lord and you continue growing in to 2 Peter 3 18 to grow in grace and knowledge. And the more you grow in grace and knowledge, the more God's gonna send you your assignment for his glory. So souls could be one to his kingdom. That's what's back in Proverbs. Those are wise will save souls. God bless you. I love you guys. I'll continue next week in this message. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna make prayers, praise the Lord. Tomorrow, I'll continue in part three, amen? Going from off defense to offense position. Tomorrow, I'll continue, praise the Lord. And a new message, praise the Lord, teaching on me. So let's make prayers, praise the Lord. I'm going to have my, uh, Julie, you there? Julie Duncan, are you there? Julie. Yeah, I'm praise, here. Please. I want you to pray, sweetie, that God continue blessing the Zoom, that continue speaking to the women out there and men out there. Go ahead. They could be part of the family. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I glorify you this morning, Lord. Um, continue to add more men and women to the Zoom, to the prayer team, Lord Father God, in the name of Jesus, so that the chains could be broken, the minds could be delivered, and the hearts could be free, Lord Father God. I thank you this morning, Lord Father God, for the things that you are doing, for the things that we don't see with our own eyes, but are the things that are being done in the spirit, Lord Father God. Thank you, because I see the chain broken. I see the bones coming together. I see the bodies coming together. I see your ruha being blown into the people. Lord Father God, I see the life. I see the people coming to life in the spirit, Lord Father God. The eyes are being opened, Lord Father God. I prophesy unto the bones, Lord Father God. I thank you, Lord Father God. In the name of mighty Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, Sylvia, are you there, sweetie? Sylvia, are you there? Sylvia? Okay, honey, honey, you there? Yeah. Yes. I want you to pray, sweet. Pray that God will heal the children out there. They're going so much, man. That God will heal the children. That God will restore them because they're out there being mistreated, amen. That God will bring them back. You know, that God will protect them. That's what it says, "Bless the uh, uh, you, you, uh, bless the children for such is the kingdom of God." We gotta be like a little child spiritually. You cannot be all proud of. I'm saying, we, he the humble should be exalted. He the exalted should be humble, amen. So let's pray for the children. God protect them, especially in schools and all this stuff is going on. Go ahead. So, Father, I want to thank you, my Lord, um, for allowing us to be here together this morning, uh, studying your word, my Lord, and praying for those who are in need. And, Father, we put the children before you. And uh, first, I want to ask you, Lord, to forgive me for my sins, if I have committed any, knowing and unknowingly, Lord. Um, so that you may hear my prayer, Father. I just want to put um, all the children out there, Father, throughout the world, 
before you, my Lord, before your altar, Father. I ask you that you send mighty angels and that your Holy Spirit, Father, ministers to every youth, Father, um, this morning in a special way, my Lord. Father, I know that there's nothing impossible for you. You can go anywhere. You can open uh, any situation to glorify yourself. You can manifest yourself to anyone, oh Lord. And Father, I just ask your Holy Spirit to minister to all the youth, my Lord. Father, draw them to your word. Uh, through whatever avenue, Father, it is that you um, use to get to that um, teenage or young adult today, my Lord. Let them hear your word, Father. Let your word be planted in their hearts and in their mind, Father. You let your word be stirred up, Father, when it is planted, oh Lord. Nourish it with, with love. Nourish it with your holy power, Father, so that that seed may grow and flourish, my Lord. Father, open up their eyes so that they may see the kingdom of heaven, Lord. And Father, just send your love over them, your love that surpasses all understanding, my Lord. Your love, the, the love that there's that you can't find anywhere but in you, Lord. And Father, we pray for the little children, for the young ones, Lord. Father, I ask you that you put a circle of protection in each and every one of them, oh Lord. Whatever the situation is, Lord, you know that you're in the midst, Father. And I just ask you that your hand and your protection be over them, Lord. And also that your word be stirred up in them, Lord. Father, look at those children, Father, that, um, that don't have godly parents, that are not teaching them your word and that are not doing the right thing things as parents, Lord. Father, I ask you to minister to them, to touch their hearts, Lord. Show them the things that they do wrong, Lord. Convict them and draw them to you, Father. And Father, let your, those small children, Lord, somehow reach out to them so that they can hear your word if they're not hearing it, Lord. Use your people, Father, to Come up with ways on how to spread the gospel, Father. Because all wisdom comes from you. Let us be gentle. Help us to be gentle, Lord. Help us to be wise, Lord, on how we spread your word, Father. And Father, help us, help us to walk according to your spirit, Lord. So that whatever we do is a reflection of you and your love, Lord. Father, help us in our weaknesses, Lord. That we may be an example to others who we are around, Lord. We're not perfect, Lord. But that they may not see our imperfection, but that they may see your love and your truth abounding in us, Lord. Father, who can we trust but you? No one. You, you and you alone. So, Father, even when we don't see things, we know that you're working in the background. We trust you 100% because everything will come to pass according to your will and your will only. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, for your mercy and your grace, Father, daily. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, brothers, come bless. Brother Sim, you there? Brother Sim? Brother Sim, you there? Brother. Yeah, my brother, I want you to pray. Brother Sim, I want you to pray that God stop this body spirit in the States. People getting killed out there, man. Shooting people for no reason. You see, see these people got shot in the, I think, Colorado, in the supermarket. This body spirit is using people out there to kill people, man. Somebody who's got killed, I heard somebody was in Philly. Brother, he was telling me somebody got killed with some young kid got shot. And uh, pray that God, the spirit will be, God will paralyze the spirit of violence, man. 
or is this thing is vicious, you mind? The God will stop the, the God will stop the spirit of violence out there. You should ask me if I want bread. Father, thank you, my Lord. Okay, same question. I pray against violence, Lord, that people uh that they start fighting in the spirit and they stop fighting in the flesh because Lord yeah, um, bring the Bible, Lord. Bring the Bible. Lord, Lord, if they know the, the word, Bible, then they'll see that, they, that we don't that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we yes, fight Lord. against principalities and powers yes, and spirits, Lord. So, yes, Lord. <clears throat> so Jesus, let's bring the fight to the spirit, Lord, Man. and and let them fight against the correct, correct spirit and not fight against their brothers and sisters, Lord. Yes, and not. And not aim for their brothers and sisters. Let's aim for the devil and the powers and principalities and spirits, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Amen. Uh, Sister Kathy, yeah? Kathy? Yes, I'm here. Kathy, I want you to pray for the church. The God will bring you to the church. The God church get back in the order. Get back in prayer. Pray for the nations, pray for the communities, pray for the leadership what's going on around. It's a lot, I see it's a lot of disorder. There's a lot of confusion going on this in the in the country, man. And we need the prayers that God, God's saints will pray against these attacks because the thing is getting out ugly, you know. People are saying a lot of stuff out there. They're complaining, it's a lot of murmuring against the government and against this and that. Forget about it. Nobody's trusting nobody. But need to know that the church has the power of the Lord. Hey. Father, for the church. And I pray to other God, Father Jesus, um, for the nation as well. Pray for this nation, this country, Lord. Amen. I pray to other God, Father Jesus, for you to bring order, Father. Amen. There needs to be order, Father Jesus. Um, order in the churches, Father, and order in the lands, Father Jesus. Order, Father Jesus, and order, within the government, and order, Jesus. Father Jesus, God's within. Um, the nations of the world, Father, as well. Lord, I pray for every single political political party and leader, Father, in the entire world, Father Jesus. I pray, dear Lord God, for you to help Lord. them all to make the right decisions and the right choices, Father Jesus. And Lord, no matter what happens, Father, no matter, Father Jesus, what decisions the man in this earth, in this world may make, Father Jesus, Father, you have the last word, Father, because they're only men, Father. They don't have the authority and the power that you do. So I pray to other God, Father, for you, for the churches, Father, for the every uh, local church and every community, Father, around the world, for them to unite, Father, to come together as one body, Father Jesus, as from one body and Father, to intervene, help the churches to intervene for these nations, intervene, Father Jesus, amen, for uh, those governmental powers out there, Father, in the nations, hallelujah, Father, and and just pray, Father, for your authority. I pray, dear Lord God, Father Jesus, for you to instruct pastors, instruct um, every single church leader, Father Jesus, and every single church as Lord around the world globally. And um, I just pray, Father, amen, for, uh, Father, for, for, for your body, Father, for us, the church, Lord, to get prepared and to get ready, Father Jesus, amen, for because there's a true revival coming. There's a revival coming. And I believe that revival is already here, Father. But we just have to uh, wake up as a church. We have to really yeah. just do yeah. what we have to do, Father. We have to discipline ourselves. We have to be discipled, Father. We have to grow and learn, Father Jesus, so that we can, Father, preach the good news, so that we can, Father, bring, Father, uh, Father, um, healing and bring hope, Father, bring hope in this world amen hallelujah amen. so father in your name dear lord god father jesus i pray and um give us the wisdom the knowledge and the supernatural intelligence father that we need to fight against those principalities and powers out there father jesus yes. in your name dear lord god father i pray amen hallelujah amen thank you lord. honey you there bishop you there hey yes I want you to pray that God brings help to the body of Christ, brings help to the people how to eat properly, right? Because a lot of obesity inside the church, people eat anything they see is kind of dangerous, man. 
kind of what, what you're eating, what you're drinking, man. So the pray that God will give the wisdom to the people how to properly eat and keep them so healthy. And it's a long journey we're in because it's a long journey, man. You know, you know, you know, promise, I promise to nobody. Anything you eat could, could affect your walk. Want to get in paralyzed, wind up in a hospital. Pray that God show them how to eat properly since she's in this pandemic, amen. And God will bless the, the uh, God will raise up the healthy man and woman of God, amen, in the body. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, your word says in um, Genesis. Hold on. In Genesis 1 29, and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb, very seed which is upon the face of all the earth, right. and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So, Father, we thank you for the herbs, the food. You even said in the day of Noah in chapter 9 that you've given us every meat to eat, Lord God. And Father, we cannot call unclean what you have called clean. Lord, you know what meats and foods are good for us. We pray that we look in reference to your word, to what's healthy and appetizing to us. Not only that, I pray for those that, have, that are sick and have chronic sicknesses, that they may go and, 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 and drink their medications and, and that they may uh, eat healthy food and keep away from man-made food that was made to be marketed but not bring health and provide stability for the for the organs so father we just rebuke every plan and especially people in pharmaceuticals we rebuke um people that are creating man-made food plastic food false chemicals in our in our meats and our products and putting sugars that are harmful and, and chemicals into the food, into the water. We pray for our food and our water. Not only that, we pray for the people that have gotten sick with the coronavirus because this sickness has hurt many, many people. So I pray for healing. And even those that are sick right now with the coronavirus, I pray that you bring healing, Lord, for, for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for mental healing, physical healing, emotional healing, especially emotional because people get breakdowns, they get oppressed, they get depressed, uh, and they run by their feelings. Your word says we should be slow to anger, Lord. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for your word that it instructs us and, and it's healing. So, your word says by your stripes we are healed and we receive healing, not only for us, for it is the children's bread, but also for the body of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord, my brother and sister. I'll make this quick prayer. I'm going to release you guys. I'm going to do a random prayer. You ran prayer, the priest prayer. Okay. Put your hands up if you want. Amen. I'm going to pray. Okay. I'm going to pray. The Lord, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak to Abraham, his son, saying, this is the way you should bless the children of Israel, saying to them. Now we the children, we the spiritual Israel. Amen. Verses 24, the Lord, will, the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you. He should be gracious into you. And the Lord will come upon you and give you peace. Father, I thank you for them. Father God, bless them in a special way. Bless them for your glory. Continue, Father God, let them take heed what we've been taught today, Father God. Let them grow in grace and not your son, Jesus Christ. Keep them a beautiful day. Let them stay focused on you and meditate on your word. And I thank you when you want to go to add to the Zoom. Let them, then, let them continue searching for you, my Lord, in Zoom, Father God. And then I have a church, my Lord, we're here to teach the word. We're here to teach the son of doctrine more than shame for your purpose and plans, Father. Father, I bless him for your glory. That we see each other again, Father. Give him a blessed day, Lord God. And we thank you, Father. Come with your precious blood, their hand, their word, their possession, their families, and their influence. And we thank you, Father God. In Jesus Christ, son, amen. God bless you guys. I love you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. You have a wonderful day. Silver, God bless you. Uh, Kathy, God bless. Bless you, God Kathy. Bless. Bless you, Kathy. See you Kathy. later. God bless you. God bless you, Julie. God bless. All right. I'll see you guys. Sing God bless you, Papi. I'll leave. See you guys later. Bless you. Bye. God bless you. Bless you. See you guys. Have a wonderful day.